Data types that implement the iterator trait can be iterated, for example, inside a for loop. The vector implements the iterator trait, so we can directly iterate through the elements of this vector using a for loop syntax. For this example, we'll simply print out the values. Execute the code, and we get the values 1, 2, and 3. Now what's surprising is that if I were to try to print this value again, save the file, and the code does not compile. Let's check the details of the compilation error. The error over here says that the value used here after move. And above it, it says that bows move due to this implicit call to into iter. To fix this problem, we need to call a method called iter. Data types that implement the iterator trait will have this function. Save the file and the code now compiles. Run the code and we get the values 1, 2, 3 printed twice. If you wanted to iterate through a vector more than once, then you'll need to call the function iter on the vector. But what is this actually doing? And what's the difference between calling the function iter and then not calling it? Why does calling the function iter compile the code, but not calling the function iter will cause a compilation error? In this video, I'll explain why trying to run a for loop twice on a vector does not compile. However, by calling the function iter, we were able to loop it twice. The reason why the code compiles when we call the function iter on the vector is due to the difference between iter and into iter. Here, we're calling the function iter. However, if you remove this, it implicitly calls the function called into iter. So what's the difference between iter and into iter? The difference is iter borrows and returns an iterator that returns a reference to type t. In our example, we have a vector of type t. When we call the function iter, it iterates, and for each b that you see over here, it returns a reference to this type. It's borrowing this value. On the other hand, if we remove this iter from the for loop, it's implicitly calling a function called into iter. Over here, it's the same as calling into iter. This code over here and simply calling a for loop on the vector, they do the same thing. When this function is called, it takes ownership and then returns an iterator. This iterator may return the inner type t, a reference to type t, or a mutable reference to type t. The key difference between the function into iter and iter is that iter borrows an immutable reference, whereas into iter takes ownership. When the function into iter is called, the ownership of this vector is transferred over to this for loop. Since the ownership is transferred inside this for loop, we can no longer call it again. The ownership lives inside here. Once the for loop is done executing, we can no longer use this vector. So for example, we cannot even try to print this vector out. Try to save the file and the code does not compile for the reason borrow of move value bells. The ownership has transferred inside the for loop. After the for loop is done executing, the value has been dropped. Hence, even outside the for loop, you will not be able to print this value. So, into iter takes ownership. And then after the for loop is done, we can no longer use that value. On the other hand, the function iter borrows the value. If we call the function iter on the vector, and then we call it again over here, we can run the for loop twice. It's simply borrowing the value. Once the for loop is done executing, since it just borrowed the values, we can use it again. Okay, so the function iter will return an immutable reference to the value for each iteration of the loop. But what if you wanted to use the for loop to modify the value? So far, there's only one option, calling the function into iter. To modify the value inside the for loop using into iter, here's how you would do it. So first, you need to call the function into iter, or you can simply remove it. Rust implicitly calls this function when we just simply loop through the vector. Since we're going to be modifying this value, you'll need to prefix this b with a mute keyword. Let's increment this value by 1, b plus equals 1. And this is how you will modify each value in the vector. Now remember that into iter takes ownership. So if you wanted to run this for loop again, the code will not compile. To show you this, I'll copy it and then paste it here. Now notice that the code does not compile. This is for the same reason that we saw above, that when we run this loop, it calls the function into iter which takes ownership. The ownership has transferred inside the for loop, so the next time we call it, it is invalid. The value has moved. So what if we wanted to run a for loop twice and each time modify the value inside the vector? So far, the option that we have is iter, which does an immutable borrow, and into iter, which takes ownership. So we need another option. The other function that we can call is called iter mute. For each iteration, it will return a mutable reference to t. So now we'll be able to run the for loop twice, and then for each iteration, modify the values inside it. So let's call the function iter mute. We'll need to modify this vector. We'll need to prefix it with mute, since we're going to be modifying this vector. 
And then for each iteration, it's going to return a mutable reference to this value t. Inside here, we'll need to dereference this by putting an asterisk. And finally, we can remove this mute keyword, since this will represent a mutable reference. We're not going to be modifying the reference. We want to modify the value that the reference points to. To show you that we can run the for loop twice, I'll copy this and then paste it here again. Save the file and the code compiles. Execute the code and we get the values 234 on the first iteration and 345 on the second iteration. So in this video, I explained the difference between iter, into iter, and iter mute. Iter will return an immutable reference, so you can run a for loop multiple times. Into iter will take ownership, so you can run the for loop only once. And finally, if you wanted to modify the inner values multiple times using a for loop, then you will call the function iter mute. It will return a mutable reference to the values that you want to modify.